Today we're gonna go through very interesting news related to Blender development, new software releases and updates, also unexpected companies acquisitions that seem to be going rampant these days. Blender Studio has announced the release of the interactive film production and management tool called Watchtower. This production monitoring tool is designed to visualize the status of a short film, episode or sequence and unpack as much information as possible down to the duration of a shot and the asset used in it. Watchtower was developed during the creation of Sprite Fright short film, originally as a Blender add-on called Edit Breakdown but subsequently ended up as a web-based application. Last week, Autodesk announced the acquisition of the New Zealand-based company called Maxion. They are the developer of a cloud-based platform for reviewing digital dailies. This acquisition will expand Autodesk's cloud platform for media and entertainment. We all know that 3D software are used in post-production, but now with this move, Autodesk services can be integrated even during production. By the way, if you are wondering what Maxion is, it is a powerful platform that allows leading filmmakers to collaborate and review camera footage on set and remotely. On some of the world's most complex and challenging productions, including The Matrix Resurrections that was released recently. Maxion allows for 4K HDR10 quality with studio-grade security, multi-factor authentication, visible in addition to invisible forensic watermarking, and a full digital rights management system. If you don't know yet, Blender 3.0 is in alpha, which means Blender 3.1 is in beta and Blender 3.0.1 is now out, with a long list of bug fixes and improvements. The alpha release can be downloaded from the website and it brought with it some new features such as sculpting vertex colors, sculpt node tilt support for pen tablets, and extended the asset browser editor to manage regular data blocks as assets. Also, the 3.2 release saw the removal of proxies. Proxies have been deprecated since Blender 3, but they still exist in the background as to give the backward compatibility to the older Blender projects. But they now have been fully removed, and all existing proxies are now converted to libraries overrides. Following Simon 6 part tutorial series covering the cable creation process for the Project Titan environment, the team released last week a tech demo highlighting Houdini's procedural workflow, creating environments inside Unreal using Houdini's engine plugin. I personally found this to be interesting. The team showcased Scientifax Lab and some of the tools used to create the Project Titan environment, like the building tool, where you can create buildings procedurally based on simple boxes. The tool offers a lot of control over the shape, the style of the building, number of levels, and so on. Similarly, there is the box to stair tool where you can turn boxes into stairs. This is an extremely efficient way to build environments and it will allow small teams more than ever to create huge environments in no time. Some of the tools that the team showcased are also fence, cloth, platform, and lamp tools just to name a few. Also in Houdini news, Cable Generator 2 has been released. It allows you to connect cables and subcables from an input curve or an input geometry. It includes also tools to simulate gravity, colliding with other objects, cable detangling, and auto UV generation. Back in November of last year, Reillusion unveiled the upcoming Character Creator 4, a new and improved version of the company's previous Character Creator 3 and its aim is to help artists create and customize realistic and stylized looking 3D characters with ease. Real Illusion released a new video showcasing Character Creator 4 work in progress in which the team showcased some of the new release features, such as their upcoming scalable expression editing and smart skin shader. They wanted to emphasize the freedom of scalable expressions with the help of 60 to 140 band shapes in Character Creator 4. And with the smart skin shader, you can create any ethnicity and automatically identify skin region for color adjustments. Substance Sampler 3.2 is here. This version saw a lot of new features, which include the addition of the physical size, which will help you keep your material scale consistent and precise when creating digital material libraries from scanned physical samples, and when using the material in other applications, allowing a consistent display across all apps. There is also metadata input to tackle custom pipelines. This version also introduced the all-new Weave tool, which allows you to create intricate and complex fabric formations by giving you total control over the wrap and weft of the cloth. 
Also, Unity has announced the acquisition of Ziva Dynamics, the creators and developers of simulation and deformation software using machine learning and real-time character creation. The company's flagship software, Ziva VFX, is used to digitally replicate and couple the physics and materiality of soft tissue, such as muscles, fat, and skin, enabling artists to create the most lifelike CGI characters. The senior vice president and the general manager of Unity Technologies, Mark Witten, wrote on a blog post last month that the Unity team is focusing on democratizing tools for creators so that the industry's most brilliant gems are available to everyone. This acquisition is one of many that Unity had in recent years, such as the recent acquisition of Weta Digital, Speedtree, and SyncSketch, just to name a few. Also, JangaFX released their first public demo of the much-anticipated real-time fluid simulation software called LiquidGen. It is the counterpart to JangaFX popular Embergen real-time volumetric fluid simulations for games and film, which has been used to work on amazing projects. On separate news, Just Catch Me created a free online-based tool for artists to create their own references. Artists are always looking out for references, to nail perspective and proportion of their characters, and Just Sketch Me helps you create your own poses based on 3D characters, and it contains loads of poses, giving you a starting point for producing your own drawings. The platform offers a lot of features, such as realistic and anime models, pet and fantasy models, a huge library of pre-built poses, and much more. When it comes to rendering news, Kaios announced the release of VR5 Update 1 for Unreal. The new update adds Unreal Engine's compatibility support for Unreal Native materials, significant workflow optimizations, and faster baking and rendering. Also, new features include the addition of light mix for adjusting the tint and power of lighting post render, and initial support for animated objects. Also, Keyshot 11 is here. The new version was released a couple of days ago, and it added the much-awaited ability to import FBX deformable animations and a new rigid body dynamic system, which was used to create all the simulations in the teaser video. However, it is not possible to simulate the soft body dynamics, and there is also the new Keyshot viewer for publishing and sharing Keyshot files online. And as every single software company and their grandmas are moving towards subscription-based services every day, Keyshot is joining the party. Which means sales of perpetual licenses are planned to be discontinued starting from this version along with Keyshot HD. Boris FX announced that its free standalone version of Particle Illusion now includes fluid dynamics. Particle Illusion is a GPU-accelerated 2D particle tool that can be used to generate all kinds of particle effects for VFX, motion graphics, backgrounds, etc. And they released on their YouTube channel a two-hour stream highlighting the new features of Fluid Dynamics and Particle Illusion if you want to know more about it. If you are interested, you can check their channel. Also, RD Textures has announced that it has joined the Epic Quixel Megascan library, and users who had purchased the collections before will retain access and can download them from the RD Textures website until the 3rd of April 2022. Also, from now on, users can access all textures via Quixel Megascans. Object scans, however, will not be available. Users who wish to keep the object scans must download them on the RD Textures website before April the 3rd. On the other hand, users with the Epic Games login will have access to use the textures in Unreal for free. Now, with some game development news, following the huge acquisition deal that Microsoft did last month, Sony is making moves of its own. Last week, Sony acquired Bungie, the fan favorite developer behind Destiny series and the first few Halo video games. They spent a $3.6 billion on this acquisition, and the company is set to retain creative freedom and the ability to publish video games for different platforms. Also, on the same topic of game development and acquisitions, next year, the Cyprus based mobile video game company, best known for the Throne Rush and Hero Wars, announced last week that it has invested $100 million into the acquisition of three mobile game studios, including Cubic Games. RG Games and Royal Arc. This is the first acquisition and investment deal that the company ever did since it became public. 
Cubic Games is well known as a publisher of mobile first-person shooter video games such as Pixel Gun 3D, NRG Games is the developer of puzzle RPG game Breakers that is expected to be released in 2022, and Royal Arc is the creator of two mobile survival RPGs Dawn of Zombies and Shelter Wars. Next to the company we are talking about, invested in parent companies of the game publishers, planning to bolster the game's growth. Also Paramount Plus has released the first official trailer of the upcoming Halo TV series. The trailer that was released last week revealed all the main characters in the show, first you can see Master Chief, Cortana and some enemies including the Elites and the Brutes. The show's timeline will be different from the game series though, it will have its own canon as it was confirmed by the executive producer, also it is scheduled to be released on the 24th of March. Also, Game Development and Studio Services Agency Amber revealed its plan to launch a new studio in Ukraine. The office will be headed by former Ubisoft manager Matthews and the studio will be located in Kiev. According to them, it will focus on building partnerships and providing services for AAA game developers in the country. The Ukraine-based studios include the developers behind Metro Series and they are known as 4A Games. Also there is GSC Game World, the developers of the iconic post-apocalyptic first-person shooter Stalker series, where in addition to Frogwares just to name few. I hope you found this video useful, if you did please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.